guys. Well, today we are going to talk about what you must know to succeed at weight loss. When this, <laughs> what you must know to have a successful weight loss journey. And I say successful because so many times we start a diet or we start a workout program or we start trying to lose weight and it doesn't, it ends but it doesn't end successful. It ends with us quitting. It ends with us getting frustrated. Sometimes the really big doozies, the really big failures end with us gaining weight. <laughs> Have you ever done that one? Like you start off to lose weight and then you gain weight. Totally done that. Um, not proud of it, but I've totally done it. And so today we're going to talk about this one thing, this one thing that you must do if you want to succeed at weight loss. This one thing that you must know and then do, because in order to do it, you gotta know it. <laughs> and so anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. And let me just tell you, this one thing I use, I, have, I had heard this before, I had heard other people talk about it. I spent uh, I spent over a decade in the weight loss failure category. I know some of y'all are just like, come on, tell me the one thing. Hold on, I'm getting there. Um, but I want to tell you this first, because if you have struggled with your weight, then you might try to fight some of what I'm saying, just like I tried to fight this for more than a decade. And ultimately, it came down to I got sick of failing. I got sick of starting and stopping. I got sick of shopping in the plus size section. I got sick of diet after diet, New Year's resolution after New Year's resolution. And it wasn't until it was like I got to the point where it's like something if I want something to change, if I want my body to change, then I've got to make some changes. And that was really when I started to embrace this thing we're going to talk about. That's really when I started to say, you know, maybe, maybe I'll try that. <laughs> and it worked. So anyway, the number one thing you must know. So I'm going to go, we're going to go and I'm going to tell you, and then we're going to talk about it. All right. So I want you to fight everything in you that says, I can't do that, Carmen. I've got this, that, or the other thing. So the number one thing that you must do is get rid, get rid of all the unhealthy junk in your house. Get rid of it. Go through your pantry. Go through your refrigerator. Go through your freezer. And everything you pull out, you ask it this one question. When you pull those oatmeal cream pies, out of your pantry by little Debbie. <laughs> Those are one of my favorites. They're cheap, they're delicious, they're yummy, they're sweet, they're cookie and cream. It's awesome. You look at those cream pies and you say, will you help get me to my goal? And if the answer is no, get rid of it. And so like, and you can throw it away, you can donate it, you can go drop it off at, you know, your worst enemy's house, you can do whatever you want with it, but it has to leave your house. I used to be the person that I would I would go to start losing weight, right? And I would be like, all right, I got this. And then I would hear different experts or different whatever say, you got to get rid of the junk. You got to clean out your pantry. And I would just think, no, I can just say no. Like I, 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 I am strong enough that I can just say, no, I don't want this or no, I don't want that. And I'm strong enough to do that. And so anyway, <laughs> that, that would be, that would, that would work really well. Like uh, that would work really great from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then this other broad would come and have it my body. And I would find myself in the pantry, in the refrigerator, in the freezer at 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, eating all these things I didn't plan on eating, eating all these things. And I would be like, oh, like anybody else do that? You do good all day long. And then all of a sudden at night, the craving monster hits you and then you break. You go eat the ice cream, you go eat the potato chips, you go eat all that. And you know, one of the first steps in <laughs> most people in my, in my experience, I was addicted to food and I didn't think I was. And today I help other people. I run boot camps and we have uh, challenge groups that we run like virtual virtual boot camps. So I work with men and women from around the country, um, Canada, uh, Europe, all those different places. And I help them do the same thing. So I help them set up their goals, you know, uh, meal planning, fitness, all that kind of stuff. And we, we basically work together until they lose weight. And so not only with myself personally, but with them, 
one of the things that I notice is that they don't want to get rid of the junk and that they think that they can have it in the house and they'll just say no. But what I will tell you is it doesn't matter where, where you're at or who you are, it's about setting yourself up to succeed. Doesn't it seem really silly to say, I'm going to succeed, but I'm going to leave all these things that have tripped me up in the house. I'm going to leave them all there. I'm going to like booby trap this and see. And look, I, I, you know, I said just a second ago that I struggle with food addiction and I would say probably 80% of the clients that I work with also struggle with food addiction and don't even know it. It's not until they start losing weight or they've lost the weight where most people can look back and go, yeah, I, I totally was addicted to food. Most of the time when I start working with somebody and we start their weight loss journey, it, they're like I was. They're like, I'm not addicted to food. Like I can say no to McDonald's. Hello, no problem. And so getting rid of the food. And when you are addicted or when you have something that you know you're going to want, and there's times you can't say no to it. It's like, you know, when somebody goes through AA, they, one of the things they recommend is don't be around it. Like don't go to a bar, don't be around alcohol, get it out of your house. And then they go a step further, don't hang out with people that are gonna be boozing it up. Why? Because that is like torture. It is torture to deny yourself something that's right in front of you that you want. Like you are torturing yourself. Like, <laughs> I want that little, I want that oatmeal cream pie, but I can't have it. I want to eat it, but I'm not going to. And so you can expect yourself to just be good or you can be wise and set yourself up for success. And it's not because look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Your current size is a reflection of your habits. My when I was 288 pounds, those 288 pounds were a reflection of my habits. I had 288 pound habits. How do you know? I was 288 pounds. Today, I have size two habits. How do you know? I'm a size two. So whatever size you are, that's gonna tell you the habits that you have. And so no matter how bad I didn't wanna have those habits, I had the habits. I had the habits of snacking at night. I had the habits of emotional eating. I had the habits of it's a long crappy day, give me the freaking pint of ice cream and the oatmeal cream pie and I'll eat them together. <laughs> I know it's so bad. Oh, uh, yeah, and I just admit it all, right? I don't try to hide it. I'm just like, yeah, I ate all the junk. And then I chased it down with some Dr. Pepper back, back, and it wasn't even diet. Like it was like the full fat Dr. Pepper. And so you've got to get rid of the junk. Now, sometimes people will say, well, Carmen, that's just like a big fat waste of money. Yeah, it is. But here's the deal. You can either spend a little bit more on your nutrition now, or you can spend more later when you've got to go to the doctor. Your, your health choices are going to cost you one way or the other. And so go donate it to some needy families. Go throw, you know, throw it away, do whatever. And we still do this inside of our home. Like after Christmas, we, I gave, we, you know, after like when it's, when it's after Christmas, I will say to my kiddos, I'll say, Hey, look, it's after Christmas. We've totally been having fun with food. We've been eating junk. And at January 1st, we're cutting it off. And that means any leftover candy we have in the house goes into the trash can. It doesn't go into the freezer. It doesn't go up in a cupboard somewhere. It goes in the trash. Why? Because there's always going to be more candy. There's always going to be more cookies. There's always going to be more whatever. And so me keeping it around the house isn't going to help me get to my goals. And it's not teaching my kids boundaries with food. Like my kids are kids, right? Like they eat candy, they eat pizza, they eat cheeseburgers. Um, tonight after dinner, they already got a Kinder Egg set aside that they're gonna eat. But at the same time, they're not just allowed junk whenever they want it. Why? Because if you, when I ate junk whenever I wanted, that led to 288 pounds. It led to morbidly obese. And so you have got to start getting into the mindset of setting yourself up for success. And if I leave the junk in the house, what is that going to lead to? That's going to lead to me binging on it, not planning to, but my old habits are going to come knocking on the door. 
And in the very beginning, your willpower isn't strong enough to say no. Now, the great thing about the willpower muscle is the more you work it, the stronger it gets. So it will get stronger. And eventually, like, event, I can remember walking through the food court when I first started losing weight. And it was like torture, torturous to walk through the food court and smell all those smells and not buy anything. To now, I go out to fast food with my husband and I can eat a protein bar while talking to him. And I, you know, I don't do that all the time. I certainly love fast food just like, you know, anybody else. However, there are times where I have a certain goal or whatever. And I'm just like, no, I just actually don't want the cheeseburger. But that's now, that's not then. And so, <laughs> I know some of you are like, wait, what? You ate a freaking, I get it, I get it. I get it. I would have judged me too. But here's the deal. If you want to change, you've got to make a change. If you want your body to change. And if you watch our channel, you'll hear me say that a lot. But it's something that you've got to start telling yourself. And the more you tell yourself that, the better off you're going to be. And so you have got to, um, <laughs> for me personally, I won't say you have to, but for me personally, I have to keep myself on a tight leash. And here's why. I was morbidly obese for a very long time. I struggled with my weight almost my entire adult life. I have been, I was overweight way longer than I've been skinny. And so I still have morbidly obese habits that sometimes try to rise back up and say, hey, remember me. And so I loosen up that leash from time to time. Holidays, birthday parties, vacations, all the Saturday night, date night, whatever it is, a birthday party, I'll loosen the leash. And I'll allow myself to have whatever it is that I want. However, I have to tighten that baby back up. Why? Because if I don't keep myself on a tight leash, I will wind up right back where I started. I will wind up back at morbidly obese. I will wind up back in a size 22. I will wind up back shoving to my shoving my body into Spanx underneath everything. Um, and so... And, you know, sometimes, like, at night, there's nothing wrong with having a craving. Nothing wrong with having a craving. Cravings are going to come. Cravings come and they go. You ever notice how they work? Like, sometimes, like, and, and most of my cravings happen at night. If the junk food is not in the house, most of the time, at 1030 at night, when I'm walking around in my tank top and my underwear and my fuzzy robe, I am not going to get in the car and go drive somewhere to get potato chips or ice cream. So it's about making it as inconvenient as possible to go back to my old habits. It's about setting myself up for success so that I can actually maintain the weight that I lost. Or in the beginning, just lose the weight. And at night, let's just say I have a sugar craving, but I don't have any sugar in the house. What's the worst thing I'm going to do? Go kill a bag of carrots? Mm, give me those things. Like you're only going to do so much damage with a bag of carrots. You're only going to do so much damage with, you know, some Greek yogurt. You're only going to do so much damage with those doggone rice cakes, you know. <laughs> but if you have the unhealthy stuff in your house, don't expect yourself to be perfect. There's only one perfect person that ever walked this earth and none of them, none of us are him. And so take this expectation of perfection off yourself and just look at your habits for what they are. Like, look, this is currently a bad habit that I have. Now I'm working on replacing that bad habit with a good habit, but that bad habit is still there a little bit. And so I need, you need to hedge your weaknesses. This is what all successful people do. All successful people, whether it's in business, finance, relationship, parenting, whatever it is, they have learned to, they're not perfect. They have flaws. They make mistakes just like the rest of us. Successful people make mistakes just like the ones who are non-successful make. They have just learned to hedge their weaknesses so that their mistakes don't rule and reign their world. And it's the same thing when it comes to weight loss. You're not going to be perfect, right? You're going to mess up. But it's about hedging your weaknesses. Right now, if you go up and look inside of my pantry, you're not going to find any junk food. But two weeks from now, you might. We might have a birthday. We might have a holiday. We might have whatever coming up. If you were here during the holidays, OMG. <laughs> like Thanksgiving this year, we had a candy table. Like a table. Four different kinds of Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, homemade caramel corn. This homemade 
white chocolate covered popcorn with pop rocks and sprinkles. Um, we had homemade peanut butter balls. Like we, it was just ridiculous. You know, the candy corn, the pumpkins, all those things. It was ridiculous. But, and we fully enjoyed. As soon as that week was over, it had to go. Why? Because if I kept enjoying, I would wind up. So it was okay to have it when you want it, but then get rid of it. And so like for me, if I want ice cream, I would rather, like my husband and I, we don't, I don't buy ice cream very much to keep at our house. But when we're on a date night, we will go to like those frozen yogurt places where it's basically like ice cream. They just call it frozen yogurt. And then they have all the toppings. We will go overpay for frozen yogurt and get a single serving versus having a whole, yes, would it be cheaper to go to the store and buy a gallon and keep it at the house? Yeah, absolutely. But is that... Is that the, is that, is that going to save me in the long run? No, keeping ice cream around my house to save a little bit of money is going to cost me more money with unhealthy health bills. So my husband told me this one time, he's like, babe, it's about being penny smart and dollar stupid. And we had learned this from a business mentor that we had. Um, don't be penny smart and dollar stupid. Like don't make a decision to save a couple pennies. that are going to cost you dollar, big dollar bills in the long run. And that's what that is. You know, I'm not going to get that one single serving because it's going to cost me more money. Same thing like if I want trail mix. Trail mix is not good for you, even though they tell you it is. Like it's very high in fat and calories. Sugar too. And I like it. <laughs> There's the store-bought granolas. Nom, 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 nom. Like I could just spoon it out of the bag and eat it. But it's not healthy. But if I want one of those, if I want some of that, then I will buy a single serving versus buying a whole bag. All right? All right, let me just make sure I covered everything on it. I, I get excited when I talk about this stuff. One of the things I just, I spent so long as a weight loss failure, so long, not knowing if I ever would succeed. And now that I have, and I saw that it was never as hard as I thought it was gonna be, I'm so passionate about helping other people do the same thing. I'm so passionate about helping people go from where I was, which was stuck, which was self-conscious, not feeling good about myself, not feeling sexy and crossing the bridge into who I was, to who I always wanted to be, but just wasn't sure that I could. And so I get talking and I, sometimes my husband's like, you're being loud down there. Are you yelling at somebody? I'm like, no, not yelling, just excited. So anyway, all right. So thank you so much for watching the video. With that being said, make sure you hit the subscribe button ring the bell so that way you get notified whenever we upload videos. We do upload weight loss tips every single week. We are live on the channel every single Tuesday night. So make sure to subscribe, hit ring the bell. And if you know somebody who struggles with their weight, if you know somebody who is on a current diet and trying to succeed in this battle of the bulge, make sure to share our channel with them. Losing weight is hard enough. Um, it's just hard enough, period. But when you have a group of women or a tribe that you can go to that have been there and done that, and you can go there for inspiration and you can go there for tips that actually work, or just to be a part of a community or a part of a group that people are all going in the same direction so you don't feel like you're on an island alone, that is huge. And so make sure to um, extend, you know, extend the channel to somebody if you think it would help them. And so thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.